19.5 million. 19.5 million. That's the number of refugees among our global population. All struck by this astounding piece of evidence, I would also like to quote Warson Shire, a British Somali poet. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. Representing the Medical Association of KG5, the three of us stand here today in order to raise awareness and address the current situation of refugees in Hong Kong by featuring our epiphanic moment in discovering a unique solution that emphasizes the importance of rectifying healthcare accessibility among minorities. Before I proceed with the details of my speech, I would first like to introduce a short news article titled, Next. Syrian refugee who fled more than 7,000 km to Hong Kong applies for asylum seeker status, which was published by the South China Morning Post on the 9th of September, 2015. This article simply elaborates on a Syrian national who had to flee his home country due to an ongoing civil unrest during the time and traveled all across the seas, all across the borders, arriving in Hong Kong and filed for an asylum seeker status. However, this refugee's non refoulement claim was only considered as pending with no further extensive actions taken by the government and indicative motives in approving his status. Victoria Visniewski, a member of the nonprofit Justice Center of Hong Kong states, it is often a shock to refugees when they discover Hong Kong is not actually bound by the refugee convention and has a restrictive asylum policy. Consequently, Asylum seekers and refugees tackle a range and a variety of problems on a day-to-day -day basis, ranging from the presence of a language and communication barrier, the lack of employment opportunities, and most importantly, the physical and psychological effects of this traumatic experience. And yet, the major distinction that strikes between an asylum seeker and a refugee is the approval process that occurs in determining their official status. An asylum seeker is an individual who is seeking for international protection, where his or her applied refugee status has not been formally confirmed. Whereas a refugee is an individual who had to flee his home country due to the threats of war persecution and violence in search for the protection of another nation. Therefore, not every asylum seeker is recognized as a refugee, but every refugee was originally an asylum seeker. Regardless of if they are a refugee or an asylum seeker, these minorities in Hong Kong face difficulties on a day-to-day -day basis, which Jennifer will further elaborate elaborate upon. So before I begin with my speech, I'd first like to ask everyone sitting in the audience here today, what would you do if one day you suddenly fell seriously ill? How many of you would perhaps call ahead and visit the nearest clinic? Anyone? Or would you rather, in more dire situations, even visit the accident and emergency department at your local hospital? To many of us, healthcare is a staple, something we expect to come to our side when we need it the most and when our lives depend on it. Yet, have you ever wondered about the refugees? What about the people who cannot afford the sky-high medical bills of Hong Kong's private health care services, yet whose health cannot endure the hours, months, even years of wait that a private ho um, public hospital may entail? The truth is, refugees simply don't have the same access to health care as we do. As of right now, there is only one 
private clinic in Hong Kong that will cater to refugees. And even then, only the neediest are attended to. So then you might ask, what's wrong with public hospitals? What's wrong with a facility that almost 90% of Hong Kongers use? Tedious documentation, immigration papers, and a health registration process all need to be taken care of before they can even be considered at a public hospital. And by the way, only 0.1% of all asylum seekers in Hong Kong will have a chance to be accepted with the right immigration process. So this leaves the rest of them with no choice but to make do with meager remedies for even the most severe and chronic illnesses. And over time, this can send them into a downward spiral of declining health, which can be ultimately detrimental to their lives. As a volunteer at the annual Christmas refugee party held at my school, I was drawn to one of the mothers nursing a sick baby. She was frantically trying to lower her baby's temperature by placing a damp towel on her forehead. So when I inched over to inquire whether she had any medicine for her child, she simply looked down, shook her head, and mumbled that the sickness would pass. She then proceeded to take out the $20 in transport subsidi uh, sub subsidies that our school had provided her in order to take a bus to the party. Yet, she had saved up the $20 by walking all the way from Sham Shui Po to our school, which, by the way, is a 50-minute journey carrying both of her children in her arms. She told me that she had so many other issues to worry about, such as feeding and clothing her family and making ends meet, especially with Hong Kong's outrageously high rent prices, then tend to such a minuscule problem. The mother's plight struck me hard as I realized that this is only the tip of the iceberg. Only one issue out of the thousands of issues that refugees in Hong Kong face each year. As a society today, there is such a disparity between the wealthy and the less privileged that we are often oblivious to the alternative world people so near to us are living in. The hardships they face, we can never truly understand, simply because we aren't in the same situation as them. But the closer we can come to a full understanding, the closer we can come to becoming a more interconnected society. So I thought then and there, what can we do as secondary school students? How can we do better? Firstly, we needed to get to know some of these refugees better. And we were lucky enough to be able to partner with Christian Action, a nonprofit organization, in order to conduct some interviews. We found that unless refugees are directly affiliated with a non-governmental organization, they simply didn't know where to look for healthcare tips and healthcare information. And one common factor that we noticed with all of the refugees we interviewed is that they all had one device that we know and love, the smartphone. So this led to the founding of our nonprofit multilingual app, MedSearch. With MedSearch, refugees will be able to find healthcare information, healthcare tips, and even the nearest routes to get to specialist clinics, such as services for obstetrics and gynecology for pregnant mothers. More importantly, they'll be able to find the transportation costs of how to get to different clinics, and this is a very important factor for refugees to consider, especially with their tight budgets. Our hope is that with this app, refugees will be able to be more familiar with the process of seeking medical help, prompting them to go and reach out and get the help they need so urgently. And so now, more on Christian action from Eileen. Since Christian Action, a nonprofit organization that aims to serve those who are disadvantaged, marginalized, displaced, or isolated has been such a substantial part behind the inspiration of our project. We felt like it'd only be fitting if we partner with them. And we're so glad to announce that this was able to be put forward. So far, in response to the 
language barrier and accessibility issue presented, we were able to talk to the medical coordinator behind Christian Action and further understand the problems refugees are faced with. We discovered that whenever a refugee takes a visit to the doctor, they are unable to communicate properly, and as a result of this, they've only been prescribed Panadol. From this, we've emphasized on the importance of overcoming this language barrier and ensuring that it caters the need of the refugees. Our nonprofit app will be primarily based on the following languages, Urdu, Swahili, French, and English. This will allow the refugees to feel more comfortable when browsing our app. However, our app is not perfect, and we do anticipate to encounter problems in the future, such as problems with user friendliness. But success comes with challenges, and we will be sure to approach each problem with the same enthusiasm we started off with. Our effort can be complemented with the help of yours. As a community in Hong Kong, we should all stand up and help those in need. Although healthcare services are a potent, uh, prominent issue refugees are faced with, they are, as mentioned, introduced to a new country with no connection, no friends, and struggle with the unfamiliar language present. Potential ways of helping them include volunteering at a local refugee shelter where you can hold an activity class such as art, music, or English, as well as raising awareness. Only through increased advocacy will the problems refugee face be brought to its full attention and experts can help reach out to help. To everyone here today, your role is equally as important as ours in the road to making healthcare more accessible and affordable in our city. The future of Hong Kong as a global city is in every one of our hands. Thank you.